Hi there. Now this makes for a great revision question if you're looking to work on particles in equilibrium on a rough inclined slope. What we've got here is a box of mass 2 kilograms and it's held in equilibrium on a fixed rough inclined plane by a rope. The rope lies in a vertical plane containing a line of greatest slope of the inclined plane and the rope is inclined to the plane at an angle alpha where tan of alpha equals 3 quarters and the plane is at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal as shown and the coefficient of friction between the box and the inclined plane is one third and the box is on the point of slipping up the plane. By modelling the box as a particle and the rope as a light inextensible string find the tension in the rope for 8 marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back I'll give you the answer for the tension in the rope and then if you want to you can see how I worked through the problem. Okay welcome back then if you had a go. So what did you get for the tension? Well the answer is that it's 15.5 newtons to three significant figures. Now if you didn't get that or just want to see as I say how I did it I'll uh, take you through that solution. So first of all what I'd want to do is to mark in the forces acting on the box here and the first force that I'd put in is the weight which acts vertically downwards it would normally be its mass then times acceleration due to gravity. Its mass is 2 kilograms, so that's going to be 2g. I'm going to take g as 9.8 throughout this problem. Next, I would also want to put in a line or a dotted line perpendicular to the plane when I'm dealing with questions on planes. And I'd mark in that this angle in here is exactly the same as the angle of the plane. We should be familiar with that idea, okay? So that's going to be 30 degrees, mark that in there. I'd also want to put the tension acting in this direction, okay? We'll label that, say, T newtons, T for tension, T newtons then. What other forces would act on the box? Well, because it's resting on a surface here, there must be a normal contact force. So we'll label that in like so as R, R Newtons for the reaction off the surface there. Now we're not done with the forces because we're told that the box was on the point of slipping up the plane. And so if it's on the point of moving up the plane, we've got friction acting because it's a rough plane and friction always opposes motion. So that's going to act in the opposite direction, down the plane. And because this is on the point of slipping, friction has reached its maximum value, often referred to as mu r, mu being the coefficient of friction, which in this example is one third. So therefore, this force here is going to be one third R newtons. All right. So we're done with the forces now acting on the box. The other thing that I'd like to draw on is this fact here that we've got tan alpha equals three quarters. When we're dealing with questions like this, it's a good idea just to draw a sketch of the triangle. This is only about ratio of sides, so if we've got a right angle triangle and this were alpha, then we're told that tan alpha equals 3 quarters and tan alpha compares the opposite side with the adjacent side. So if we say that that's 3 units, this will be 4 units. And by Pythagoras' theorem, the hypotenuse here would be 5. Should be, again, familiar with this, 3, 4, 5 triangle. So now we're done with marking up the forces on our diagram and putting this information here. We now want to apply Newton's law of motion to the particle. And we do this for planes generally parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. 
we're basically resolving, applying force equals mass times acceleration. So I'm going to start by resolving perpendicular to the plane, and I denote that with the R for resolving, and I'm putting this arrow away from the plane in this direction, signifying that that's the positive sense. I could do it in Woods, okay, it doesn't matter as long as I stick to my sign convention. In this case, away from the plane is positive. And so I'm looking at all the forces acting in this perpendicular sense, okay, to the plane. And all of R acts in that direction, so that's going to be positive R. Any forces that are perpendicular to this direction have no effect. And so the frictional force here has no effect on the box in this sense. But when it comes to the weight here, this weight here is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to this direction. It's not perpendicular. So we've got to take into account this weight. So we split this into two components. Normally I wouldn't draw the components on, I would imagine them in my mind, but I'll put them on here. The weight components, which we should be familiar with, are the ones down here, which is going to be 2g cos 30, because it contains the angle here, and the one that doesn't contain the angle is 2g sin 30, which acts down the plane. You should be familiar with splitting a force into two components. If not, do check out the tutorials on my website. So on that assumption, we're only interested in this component of the weight acting into the plane. This one is perpendicular to the direction we're resolving, so it has no effect. So if we take this one into account, it's minus, and it'll be 2g cosine of 30 degrees. So let's just take those forces away for the moment, okay, so those components. Now when it comes on to considering the tension here, the tension is not perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. So we need to split the tension into two components, and those components would be one up the plane and one perpendicular to the plane. The one up the plane contains the angle alpha, so it'll be T cos alpha, and the one perpendicular to the plane, because it doesn't contain the angle alpha, is T sine alpha. We're only interested in this one, T sine alpha, as it acts in this direction, away from the plane, in the positive sense. So that's going to be plus T sine alpha. So let's remove those components again. And this is our resultant force acting on the box perpendicular to the plane. And because it's not moving, Okay, it's not accelerating off the plane, it's in equilibrium, then this force would normally be equal to mass times acceleration, but because the acceleration is zero, it's going to equal zero. Basically, no overall resultant force in this direction acting on the box. Now if we rearrange this, make R the subject, by adding 2g cos 30 to both sides and subtracting t sine alpha from both sides, we therefore have that R equals 2g cosine of 30 degrees minus t sine alpha. Now we could put our values in for the cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 degrees is exactly root 3 divided by 2. And if you multiply it with 2g, you'll end up with g root 3. I'll keep it in exact form, okay? You might want to just keep it in decimals, it's up to you. Then I've got minus t sine alpha. Now sine of alpha, if we take alpha in this triangle here, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that ratio will be 3 fifths. So you've got minus 3 fifths t. So, or minus 3t over 5, it's up to you how you write that. Now, let's just say we call this equation 1. We now form another equation, and that equation will be to resolve up the plane, okay? So we'll resolve up the plane, taking upwards as positive. You could take downwards as positive, it's up to you, as long as you stick to your sense, okay? 
Right, let's see what forces we've got. Well, the normal contact force won't come into play because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. Let's move around to the tension here. This is inclined at an angle of alpha, so it needs to be split into two components. And we'll bring back those components for the tension again. And the one we're interested in is the one that contains the angle alpha, this one here. So it's T cos alpha. And it's acting in the positive sense, so it's going to be T cos alpha. Let's take those components away again and move around now to the weight. Now the weight is not perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. So therefore we've got to take it into account and so we need to split it into two components. And we'll bring back those components. We're not interested in this one here that's perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. We're interested in this one which is 2g sine 30 degrees. And it acts down the plane so it's going to be negative minus 2g sine of 30 degrees. Let's take those components away again and we're now onto the frictional force and all the frictional force is acting parallel to the slope and so it's in the downward sense, the negative sense, so it's going to be minus then one third of that normal contact force R. And this is our resultant force in this direction and because the box is in equilibrium that must equal zero. So this will be now my second equation, so we'll just label that too. So it's just a question now of solving these two simultaneous equations. So what I'm going to do is substitute equation one into equation two. So we'll just write that up here, sub equation one into equation two. And what will that give us? Well, first of all, we've got T cos alpha. And the cosine of alpha compares the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So cos alpha is going to be 4 fifths. So here we're going to have 4 fifths T. So we'll put that in as 4 fifths T, or 4T over 5. And then we've got minus 2G sine 30. The sine of 30 degrees is a half. So minus 2g times a half just leaves me with minus g. And now we've got minus one third r. So minus one third, and this is where we substitute our values for r in. So we've got one third multiplied by g root 3 minus 3t over 5. And that equals the zero. So just expand the bracket out now and see what we get. We'll copy our first two terms down, 4t over 5 minus g and expanding the bracket here we're going to have minus g root 3 over 3 and then we've got minus a third times minus 3 fifths t just going to give me plus a fifth t. So plus a fifth t or t over 5. And that equals 0. And this is looking nice because 4 fifths t plus a fifth t, that's going to be one whole t or just simply t. So we therefore got t. And then I've got minus g minus g root 3 over 3. Now if I add these two terms to both sides, we've got t equals then g plus g root 3 over 3. And if you work this out on your calculator, taking g to be 9.8, you should find you end up with 15.458 and so on. So if we round this to, say, three significant figures, we can say, therefore, the tension is going to equal 15.5 newtons to three significant figures, 3SF. All right.